Hi, everybody. How are you? Welcome in. Thank you so much for joining me this afternoon and letting me be a part of your week. I've got a really fun class for you guys. For anybody who's new, who's never taken a class with me before, my name is Sarah. I'm a designer for Beetalon, and uh, I'll be using a lot of Beetalon products, but a ton of Michael's stuff, and you can get a ton of Beetalon stuff at Michael's which makes that super convenient, right? <laughs> I've got a really fun project for you guys. This one is, is a pretty simple, straightforward stringing project, but this is a special stringing project because we're using lava beads. And a lot of people may not know that lava beads can be used with essential oils. And essential oils, you can use those for health reasons, but more than anything, you can just use them to smell good, <laughs> which is why I use them. Um, and they come in a lot of different fragrances. You can actually pick up some essential oils at Michael's to go with your lava beads. So we're gonna put together a lava bead necklace, and then I'm gonna show you how to use the essential oils on the beads, how to use it. It's pretty straightforward and pretty simple, but the reason why this is important is because number one, you might want to use some essential oils yourself in your own jewelry, or you may be trying to find like some last minute gift ideas. And this is a great one because the lava beads are, though we're making kind of a feminine necklace, they're, they're a very unisex bead. So if you've got some guys that you need to make some jewelry for, lava bead bracelets are fantastic. And you can you can always wrap those with like a little thing of essential oils, whether it's their favorite smell or maybe they get headaches and they need some peppermint oil, things like that. Um, it makes a really great gift, but the lava beads, most of the time I see those just in straight stringing projects like on bracelets. I wanted to do something kind of funky and fun and cool with these. So we're gonna make a really cool necklace out of these. So I'm gonna get you turned around and show you what it is that you need to create today's project. And we are going to get started. All right, so for the project, you don't need a whole lot of materials for this because it is a stringing project. As far as tools are concerned, you definitely want to have a crimper tool. I've got my standard crimper tool here and I have just my regular tools. So nothing out of the ordinary. I have my two pairs of uh, pliers. I've got my chain nose pliers and my bent chain nose pliers for opening and closing jump rings. I have my round nose pliers because we are going to do one wrapped loop today. And then a cutter tool to cut your wire, to cut your chain. That's, that's pretty much all as far as tools are concerned. The rest of this, the star of the show is going to be the beads. So the lava beads, the length of our necklace is going to be put together using just the round lava beads. And for those of you who have never really had a lava bead in your hand, they're pretty cool. They are very, very lightweight beads, so they don't make heavy jewelry, which I love and appreciate. And I have tons of customers that appreciate a lightweight piece of jewelry. So they're very, very lightweight, but they have all of these little pits in them. You can see they're very textured. And when you put your essential oils onto these beads, the oils sink down into all of those little crevices in the bead. And then the bead kind of emits that scent from the oils and it lasts a really, really long time. And the cool thing about it is, is that you can actually rinse these off and put a different oil or you can wear it until that scent goes away and then you can put another on there. So it's not like a one-time use kind of thing. So we have the round beads, but then Michaels offers these really awesome lava beads. They come on a card. I wish I still had the card for you so that you could see how they came. Um, but these really cool rectangle beads that we're gonna use as the focal of our necklace. And they're also that lava bead. So you can put the essential oils on these as well if you want to. Um, so yeah, just a really cool different shape when it comes to lava beads. Finding shapes in lava beads can be kind of difficult. I know a lot of people haven't seen them in anything other than just the round, okay? They also came with some little geometric beads in between them when they were hanging on the card. And I kept those. I'm going to include those in our design today as well. The other thing you're going to need is some chain. And I have two different kinds of chain here. I have some very small link chain. And this is in a hematite color. You can use silver with this if you want to. I just thought this, this hematite kind of dark, dark silver kind of gunmetal color would be a great... Uh, accent to the black beads here. 
And so that's the smaller chain. And then I have this larger chain. This is a curb chain, just to give it a little bit more visual interest. And you don't have to use two different kinds of chains if you don't want to for this project, but I just thought it was really cool. This necklace is a little bit, um, it's a little edgy. It's a little, you know, rock and roll, which is totally cool with me. Um, if that, if the chain part is a little much for you, you can leave the chain out and you're still gonna have a really awesome lava bead necklace. So keep in mind, you can always make adjustments. I'm just gonna show you my design and you can take it and run with it and be inspired to do all kinds of fun things. So the first thing we wanna do though, is we wanna cut our chain and we wanna cut that. We need to cut both of the kinds of chain into several pieces. The smaller chain, you want to cut about 12 pieces of this, and you want those pieces to be a little bit longer than three inches. I'll lay my ruler out here and we'll get kind of a, it's just over three inches. So maybe three and a quarter inches for the smaller chain. You're gonna need 12 pieces of that. And then for the, the larger chain, you're gonna need 13 pieces of it. And this one is about four inches in length. And you're gonna need, like I said, you're gonna need 13 of these and 12 of the other. So one extra with the larger chain. Now I'm gonna show you how I cut chain to size. I'm just gonna use a piece of silver here as an example because I have pre-cut all of the pieces that I need. But if you are not used to using chain or um, this might be your first time using chain if you're a beginner, I'll show you how easily you can cut your chain or measure your chain without having to use your ruler every single time. So a lot of times I'll just grab a piece of scrap wire. I've got a really long head pin here that I use for this purpose actually. And I will thread my chain on and determine what, what the length is. So I just thread one link on and then I'll hold it down and I'll, I'll measure it against my ruler. Let's say we need a two inch piece of chain. So I will hold it up against the ruler just like that. And then I will mark it with my finger, just kind of hold it. That's gonna be the link right there that makes two inches. So I need to go to the next link up and you can either take these links and open them with your pliers or you could just come in with a cutter tool and trim the link off. If you trim the link off, just know that if, you, if you're if you running low on chain, you're gonna lose an entire link that way. So if you're trying to um, you know, be economical about it, maybe you want to just open that link very carefully instead of cutting it off. And then that way you can close it back and you can use it as part of the measurement of your chain. So if I've got one piece that is the length that I want it to be, and I need several more of these, instead of doing that over and over again and measuring over and over again, I thread it onto a piece of wire like I have here, and then I'll thread on my other chain that I'm going to cut from right next to it, and I'll lay it out. I'll look at it as it's hanging, right, and just kind of see where the shorter piece falls on the longer piece. And then I can come in and very easily just cut off and measure that way. It just makes things a whole lot easier. And if you've got a really long piece of wire, if you've got some long pieces of scrap, then you can do all of the pieces. Like you can do all 12 of your pieces of chain this way, um, you know, and have them all lined up. And then you just sit the piece of wire to the side. And when you're ready for one of those, you just pick up your piece of wire and take that piece of chain off. Just little things like that, that don't seem like such a big deal, but definitely kind of make things easier right? It makes things easier for you when you're putting things together. And when you're a beginner, maybe you don't think about those kinds of little steps, but it really does make life more simple than having to reach for your ruler every single time. Okay. So again, the small chain, you're going to need about 12 pieces of this, unless you want to go crazy. And then you can cut as many pieces of the chain as you want to. The larger chain, we need 13 pieces of this. 12 of those pieces are going to be included in the front design, but the, the extra, the 13th piece, we're actually going to use as extension chain on the back of the necklace so that you can adjust the length. Okay, so you want to go ahead and pre-cut all of those pieces. Then we're going to link those pieces together by putting them on a single jump ring. So two pieces of chain, one of each, is going to go onto one jump ring. So you just want to take a jump ring between two pairs of pliers. You're going to twist to open, and then you're going to thread on 
one of the smaller pieces of chain with the small links, and then one of the larger pieces with the large links, and then you're going to close that back. Okay. And you'll see the, the smaller chain hangs shorter. And you want to do this with all of that chain, except for that last singular 13th piece, right? You want to sit this one to the side. That's our extension chain. Don't get it mixed in with the others. But you just want to repeat this process, opening jump rings. And for one jump ring, you need one piece of the small cable chain and one piece of the larger curb chain. And then you just want to close that back. Okay, I've got two more to do. I've, I have pre, pre jump ringed, if you will, <laughs> the other pieces. So you don't have to sit here while I do all 12 of these. But I did want to do a few just so that we did do them together, right? And this is not really a time consuming process. It doesn't take too long to do this. Putting together 12, 12 little jump rings with chain on them shouldn't take very long. I think probably the longest part of this entire project is just the cutting of the chain. So if you'll use that little wire method, it will definitely shorten the time. All right, so we have these. Let me bring in the other ones because I've got, I have plenty of these, right? I have 12 in total. I'm gonna sit these to the side. We're actually gonna thread these onto our necklace by the jump ring as we get started. So you're gonna need to cut yourself a piece of bead stringy wire. I'm using 19 strand and I'm using the bright bead stringy wire because it is that dark silver color. It really matches and goes really well with the black from the beads in this hematite color of the chain. Okay, so you wanna cut yourself about 20 inches of that. Uh, if you need a longer necklace, you can always cut more, use more beads. I'm gonna use, uh, I'm gonna end up making about a 16, 17 inch necklace plus the extension chain, which is gonna give it an adjustability up to about 19 to 20 inches. Um, so take that extension chain into, into consideration, okay? All right, so what we want to do, so we want to use a crimp for our bead string wire and a jump ring to make a loop at the end. Let me grab my crimps. I'm going to be using some number two crimp tubes. I prefer the tubes because they have more surface area. I find that they're easier to crimp with, particularly if you are a beginner. Um, but crimp beads will work just as well. Oh, <laughs> dump all my stuff out. All right move the rest of this out of the way. And I'm gonna thread on my crimp tube to the end of my bead stringing wire. I'm gonna hold it a couple of inches from the end, okay? And then I'm gonna take a jump ring. Make sure your jump ring is nice and closed, okay? You don't want that bead stringing wire to sneak through the opening of your jump ring. So just be sure that you've got a good closure on that jump ring. And you are going to thread that onto the end of your bead stringing wire. Then you're going to loop that bead stringing wire back down through your crimp tube. Okay. And you want to pull that crimp tube up close to your jump ring. You don't want it to be right up against the jump ring. You want to have a little loop here so that you've got some good movement here. You don't want to, you don't want to crowd out your jump ring by any means. But what you do want to do is make sure that your bead stringing wire is not crisscrossing inside your crimp tube. You want those, those two wires that are running through there to be running parallel within that crimp. Then you're going to bring in your crimper tool. Crimper tool has two notches on it. We've got the back notch that has like, it looks like a little pair of lips. It has the little tooth that comes down. That's the actual crimping part of the tool. And then the front part of the tool looks sort of like an egg shape. That's going to be where we make our little crimp a little bit more compact. But the first place we need to put this crimp tube is in that back notch. So we're going to sit the crimp tube into the back notch of the crimper tool, and then we're going to give it a crimp. And when you do that, it's going to bring that tooth down in between the bead string wire within, and you can even see it, right, within the crimp. 
Then you want to place it sideways in that front notch of the crimper tool and you're going to give it a squeeze. And that's going to make it a little bit more compact, right? It's just going to tidy it up and make it really small so that it doesn't take away from your design. Okay, and if you've crimped properly now, you can come in with your cutter tool and you can trim off the tail of that wire. You don't need to leave any of that behind. You don't have to feel like you need to thread this back down through a bunch of beads. None of that is necessary. You're ready to go. Okay, so on our bead stringing wire, we're going to start with our round lava beads and we're going to thread on 16 of these. I'm not going to put anything in between them, but if you would like to, you can add metal beads in between these. Um, you really can put together whatever pattern that you want. I'm just going to do straight stringing with these. We're going to do 16 of these. There's two, three, four, five, six. The only problem with the with the lava beads is that it's sometimes it's hard to see the hole because they already have like these these little crevices and indentions in them. So sometimes you have to look really close to find the hole through the beads. So we've got six, seven, and eight. Bring those down. And then I'm going to throw it on eight more. All right, so we have 16 on our bead string wire. I'm gonna set the other half of those to the side. I'm gonna bring these down. Okay, so we have the length of our necklace ready to go. Now we're gonna start building that front section. And before I string it, I do wanna kind of lay my rectangle beads out, okay? Because they are in different lengths. And just kind of depending on how you want them to, to be, you might want the longer ones in the center, or maybe you don't, you don't care particularly what order they're in, because um, they are all, all pretty different. Looks like got the longest one in the center, and then they're a little bit shorter, and then my two shortest pieces I'm going to have on the ends. But you can, you can put this together however you want to, okay? So I'm going to thread on one of our rectangle beads. And then I'm going to thread on one of our jump rings. So this guy's going on. He's going to sit right up next to that last round lava bead. I want to thread on one of my jump rings that has my pieces of chain. And I'm going to thread that on just like I would a bead. Okay. Then I'm going to thread one of these geometric beads that came with the rectangle lava beads. I'm going to thread that on. And then I'm going to thread another jump ring with chain. Okay, so we have two pieces of chain separated by a little geometric bead. And then I'm going to thread on another rectangle bead. And I'm just going to follow this pattern. So I'm going to have a rectangle bead a jump ring with the chain, one of our little geometric spacer beads, another jump ring with a chain, and then our next rectangle bead. Okay, and you can see how that chain is gonna hang nicely between each one of the rectangle lava beads. All right, so another jump ring with the chain, geometric bead, another jump ring with the chain, geometric bead, and as you're stringing, you might need to tidy up your chain. Don't let it get caught between your beads. Want to make sure that it's hanging down, right? And of course, you can you can tidy all that up after you get everything thread 
on, but you wanna be sure that it's not wrapping around your bead stringing wire. Okay. So another jump ring. A metric bead, a jump ring, a metric bead, or no, <laughs> a rectangle bead. Okay. We're almost finished with this front section. And then we're just going to finish this off with some more of the round lava beads. So again, it's a pretty simple, straightforward stringing project. But with the addition of the chain pieces that are hanging down and the cool rectangle lava beads, this really is a fun, different than just your standard, you know, round bead lava stone bracelet. This is definitely a cool necklace. All right, we've got one more piece of chain on our jump ring and our rectangle bead. All right, now before I thread on the rest of those lava beads, I do want to kind of tidy up that chain again because I don't want any of those chain pieces getting caught between the beads particularly before we go to crimp, because then once that chain piece like works its way around and falls down where it's supposed to hang, it will leave a, a too much extra wiggle room in here. Okay. So I have all of that nice and neat and ready to go. And now I'm going to thread on the rest of my lava beads. So we've got 16 more of these to go. And then we're going to crimp. We have two beads left. All right, now we're ready to crimp again. And before I do that again, I just wanna double check, hold everything up, make sure that that chain, let's see, there's one piece in here that's, all right, everything looks good. Okay, so now we're gonna crimp the exact same way that we did when we very first got started. So I'm gonna thread on a crimp tube and then I'm gonna bring a jump ring in. You wanna make sure again that that jump ring's got a nice closure on it. Take your bead stringing wire through that. And then you wanna take your bead stringing wire back down through your crimp tube. And you want to pull all of this down. Now, if you want to take your bead stringing wire and run it through a bead, just so that you've got a little bit of extra room to get your crimp tool in there, Sometimes I feel like everything is just crowded up. I don't normally have much of an issue with it when I very first get started because there are no beads on my bead stringing wire. However, once you have a, a full strand of something and you're ready to come in and crimp again, now you're kind of holding everything together. You're holding your crimp. You're making sure your wires aren't crossing. You're holding onto your jump ring. You might be holding onto other hardware, your clasp or whatever. And there's just not a lot of extra room. And then you've got to bring in your crimper tool into the middle of all of that. So if you go through a bead and pull the length of your wire down through that first bead, that kind of gets all of that out of the way and you can hold on to it from there. That makes it easier to come in with your crimper tool. So again, we're going to take it to put that crimp tube in the back notch, give it a good crimp, making sure that those wires are not crossing inside, right? Then you're going to turn it sideways and put it in that front notch and give it a squeeze to tidy it up. So now when you go to cut your bead stringing wire, you're cutting between your last and second to last bead instead of right up next to your crimp, okay? 
All right, so the stringing part of this is completely finished. Now we just need to work on our ends here. So I've got, I have two jump rings here. I'm gonna open one of those jump rings and I'm gonna put my clasp on one of those. Then remember that piece of chain that we saved from the beginning. We're gonna use this as our extension chain. Extension chain is a necessary evil. If you're gonna be selling your jewelry or if you're giving it as a gift and you don't necessarily know what size your customers or um, whoever you're giving your gift to, you don't know what size they like or what they find comfortable. So putting an extension chain on a piece, whether it's a necklace or a bracelet is a really good way to avoid the stress of giving somebody a piece of jewelry that doesn't fit. The problem is, is that a lot of times extension chains are just not pretty. They're not, it's just an, an extra piece of chain. So I like to dress mine up just a little bit, even if it's only as much as a little decorative bead. I have one of these little geometric beads left over that came between all of our rectangle uh, lava beads. So I'm going to use this little guy. I'm going to hang him from the very bottom of my extension chain, and that's going to dress it up just a tiny, tiny little bit. I know it doesn't make a huge difference, but at least for me, it makes it feel a little bit more uh, put together than just a, a rogue piece of chain hanging there, right? It makes it look more intentional. So first things first, I'm going to open up one of my jump rings here, and I'm going to go ahead and thread on my clasp. You could have done this ahead of time so that you only open this jump ring the once. You could have had your clasp when you went to do the crimping initially. Totally fine. Okay. Now I'm going to take, let's do the bead first before we attach this to our jump ring. So I'm going to take a head pin and I'm going to thread that bead right on to the head pin. And we're going to do a wrapped loop. If you want to do a simple loop, you can. You just want to make sure that because this is going to be hanging down, it might be hanging underneath clothing or definitely coming in contact with hair. Uh, jacket, whatever, you want to be sure that you've got a really good closure on it if it's a simple loop because you don't want this to come undone. I'm going to do a wrapped loop and I'm going to wrap it directly to the bottom link of my chain. So I'm grabbing the wire right where it is exiting the bead and I'm going to bend it over the top of the pliers. When I do that and I take the pliers away, the pliers have already measured a perfect little amount of space here for wire wraps. So I don't have to do any of the thinking. The tools did all of that hard work for me. I'm gonna come in with my round nose pliers and grab that wire. I'm gonna take it up and over the top barrel of the pliers because we're trying to make a loop here, but I can't finish off that loop with the bottom barrel of the pliers in the way. I need to take this wire the rest of the way around to create that full loop. So I'm just gonna rotate the pliers so I'm taking them from this position where this is the bottom barrel. Whoops. I'm going to rotate and now it becomes the top barrel and it's out of the way. I can take that wire over to close up our loop. But before I do the wire wraps, I'm going to come in with my chain nose pliers. I'm going to open that up just slightly and I'm going to thread that wire through the last link on my chain and thread that on. Okay, I like to use my bent chain nose pliers for this part. I'll come in and hold on to that loop. And then I can hold the chain out of the way by holding it in my hand with the, with the tool, with the handles of the tool. And then I can do the wire wraps between the loop we made and the top of our bead, All right? And then we're gonna come in with our cutter tool and trim off the excess wire. You wanna get in as close as you possibly can with your cutter tool. If you still need to do a little tucking with your wire, you can come in and just tuck that wire in with your chain nose pliers. So I know it's just a singular bead, but to me, it feels like it really kind of ties the whole look together. Um, just makes that extension chain a little bit more interesting than just a, a chain, right? Okay, so we are going to open up the jump ring on the other side. And we're gonna thread our extension chain on and then close that back. So now what we have is we've got a necklace that has some, some adjustability here. So we can open the clasp and close it onto the jump ring or you can put it on any of this area of the chain. And I included a really long extension chain here. This one is one of the, it's almost four inches of chain 
which is the same length as the chain here. Um, so it really gives a whole lot of wiggle room when it comes to trying to adjust the size and make it comfortable to wear. Uh, your customers or whoever you're giving it as a gift to are really gonna appreciate that. Okay, all right. So for all intents and purposes, this necklace is complete, but we need to add some essential oil to this because we wanna utilize all of these lava beads, right? Now there's really, this is pretty straightforward when it comes to adding your essential oils to your beads. So you're gonna get your essential oils in these little bottles. You can use your fingers if you want to. I personally am not a huge fan of using my fingers. For one thing, if you get the essential oils on the metal components of your necklace, it doesn't come off, it makes it slippery, it can be kind of messy. So you wanna to try to make this as clean as possible. Uh, so because of that, I like to use a Q-tip for this. And I'll just open up and put a little, put a little tray down. You can do this over the lid if you want to. Um, but I'm just going to put a little bit of that essential oil on a Q-tip and then you decide where you want this to go. Do you want this up around the neck, right? Or do you want this down in the front? And you're just gonna put a little bit of it, a very thin layer on your beads. You can do one bead if you just need a little bit. You can do it on all the beads if you want it to be nice and strong. But the most important part of this is that you wanna be sure that you let it dry before you put it on because essential oils, sometimes they have a tendency to stain your clothing and it doesn't come out. So you definitely wanna let this dry before you put this on. You wanna let it dry before you package it up. If you're gonna give it as a gift, just let it sit out in the air for a little bit. It doesn't take very long for it to, to dry and it's really not drying what it's actually doing, doing is it's kind of seeping down into all of those little crevices of the lava beads. So it, it doesn't exactly dry. It's just kind of being absorbed by those beads. And that's really all there is to it. There is no, you know, there's no magic to it, but you don't want to overdo it either. You don't want to use a ton of it. I don't want to just drop this down on the beads. I definitely want to use something. Use your finger, use a little Kleenex, use a Q-tip if you want to. Um, don't soak your beads in this by any means. And after you wear this for a little while, it, that smell is going to go away. So you can reuse them over and over again. If you've got this in bracelet form, if you're just making a lava bracelet, you can rinse it off and add new scent to it. But a lot of times that's not even, it, that never even becomes an issue. Um, you will wear away the scent. It's gonna last a while, but you can reapply it as many times as you want to. And once that scent has gone away, you can change it up for a different scent if you want to. So that's it, you guys. I can tell this one where I added it is, it's almost, you can see the difference. One of them's a little shinier than the other one. This one's ready to go. At this point, it looks like it looked before I added the oil to it. So it is wearable. This one needs another minute or two just to kind of soak all of that in, but then it's ready to wear as well. I'm gonna turn you guys around and put this on a bus so you can see what it looks like. I hope I've inspired you. This is definitely a fun design. And the lava beads make a great gift for sure. So if this design is a little too edgy or rock and roll, <laughs> right, that's okay. Definitely going to be a good one for a fashionista for sure. Um, maybe she's a fashionista uh, that, that likes to smell good. <laughs> I don't know, maybe needs a little peppermint oil. <laughs> But it's, it's a, it is a great gift. And of course the lava beads, like I said before, are very unisex. So they, they work great for jewelry for just about anybody. And you can incorporate a black bead anywhere. And the fact that you can reuse the oils on them just make them extra special because you can't do that with just any beads. So there you go. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's project. I wish the camera would stay over here on the, on the actual necklace. I, 
appreciate you guys hanging out with me this afternoon and letting me show you another fun design. I will be back with you guys very soon with another fun project. If I don't see you before the holidays are over, have a wonderful uh, Christmas, Hanukkah, New Year's, all of that. You guys have a wonderful holiday and I will see you guys again soon. Bye guys.